Welcome to your first homework review video. The purpose of these short videos is to get your brain to remember many of the concepts we have learned to prep you for upcoming assessments. So I want you to pay attention and keep your mind focused as we go through this short lesson so that you are using it as an effective study tool. Just a reminder, uh, you have a vocabulary quiz next class period and you have a Native American test next week. So let's go ahead and get started. Number your paper 1 through 20 if you have not done so already. Write the answer down before I give the answer and correct your answer if you get it wrong the first time. Pause the video if you need a few more seconds than I allow between reading and explaining the question and providing the answers. So number one, let's get started. What is the vocabulary term that the picture is referring to? Notice the arrow is pointing to the man who is spear fishing, and this would be a quacky auto man catching his dinner. This would be a human resource because the human is doing the needed or necessary job. People are human resources. Number two, what tribe lived in the region marked with the number three on the map? I hope you said Kwakiatl, and you would be right. Know that the Kwakiatl probably reached further down into Washington and Oregon and parts of California, as well as that part of Canada. The region to remember for the Kwakiatl is the coastal range. And remember, the Kwakiatl Indians did live in wooden shelters because the climate there is rainy, and they are the ones to remember who had the totem poles. Number three, what is the vocabulary word that is a place inhabited or lived in by people, an established community called? A settlement. And notice the settlement there um, on the Great Plains would be a temporary settlement because the Lakota Sioux followed their game, primarily the buffalo. Here is a settlement, but it's a more permanent settlement of the Kwakiatl because they're not moving anytime soon. You can tell by their structures and their living environment that, that this settlement is permanent. Number four. Blank is the study of the cultures of the past by finding and examining artifacts. Hope you said archaeology. Hard word to spell, so take your time writing that one down. The horse skeleton found at Jamestown during the archaeology dig in one of the first layers under the soil is what you see in that picture. This shows that 200 years after Jamestown, Confederate soldiers camped on the island during the Civil War and one of their horses died there. You can see underneath the feet of the archaeologist that they've dug only about one to two feet down below the surface in order to find this skeleton. They would have to dig about two to four feet down in order to locate the Jamestown artifacts that would be from the 1600s. What is the vocabulary term for number five that means to distribute or spread over a wide area? The term is disperse. And you can see this red line representing the dispersing of many different Native American peoples. If we're following the land bridge theory, um, you can notice the red line going through the Bering Strait, and then it tapers off and it disperses into multiple directions, depending on where that people group went, traveled, and finally settled. Native Americans dispersed all over North and South Africa. Number six, what tribe lived in the region marked with the number two on the map? Did you say the Inuit? If so, you are correct. The Inuit people lived in the Arctic region, up at the Arctic Circle. Very cold in that region, as you can see. The Inuit are the ones who lived in igloos. Number seven, why can we not just read a book to learn about ancient cultures and civilizations? 
Well, the reason is because some did not have a written language. Many ancient cultures and civilizations wrote in pictures, and some did not write at all. You can see the stone pictures that are painted on this stone cave wall don't have letters or words that go along with them. In fact, these pictures most likely had symbols. As historians, we have to take the artifacts and we have to take certain images that are there and interpret what they mean. Sometimes we don't know exactly what they me meant, but we can look at multiple copies and make an educated guess. Number eight, what is something that tells about an event and is from the time of the event? A primary source. This photograph of these totem poles is a primary source because this is an actual photo of the real totem poles built by the Kwakiato Indians. Most photographs are primary sources because they are actually capturing the event or capturing the image from that time of the actual thing. A arrowhead would also be a primary source from Native American cultures. It's the actual piece that would have been used by the Indians at that time. Number nine, what tribe lived in the region marked with the number four on the map? This region would be the Basin and Range region. Did you say the Pueblo? If so, you are correct. Remember that this term has multiple meanings. In the question number nine, we were using Pueblo to reference a certain tribe or people group. But remember, they also, um, we can also use Pueblo as multi-storied adobe houses made out of clay. Number 10, what is the vocabulary term that the picture is referring to? And what I mean is, is it a capital resource? Is it a natural resource? Or is it a human resource? I hope you said capital resource. The canoe is a capital resource because it is a good used to catch food, to catch fish, and to transport the natives from place to place. Number 11, the different tribes that emerged across the Americas developed different cultures based on which of those? D, all of them. The physical geography of the land, the climate, and the available natural resources would all be reasons why the different tribes had different cultures. Think about it. The reason the Inuit live in igloos is because there's a lot of snow in that cl climate. There is a lot of uh, snow and ice in that region, and they needed to use they had to create a home. Think about the Quanquiato homes. They're made out of wood because there's lots of forests there. And the reason they are so closed in with roofs and a door is because it was raining very often in that region. Think about the teepees made by the Lakota Sioux Indians. These are made of buffalo skins because there were lots of buffalo. Those, that was an available natural resource. And they needed to pick it up and move because they were following the available natural resource in order to eat and survive. The adobe houses were made out of clay because that's what the Pueblo people had to make their houses with. And finally, the longhouse is made out of trees and bark and is, is made this way because that is what the Iroquois had. Sorry about that interruption. Moving on, number 12. What is something that tells about an event but is from a time after the event and usually talks about a primary source? You see one in the picture. Hopefully you said secondary source. That is an ancient Egyptian textbook. 
It may have a primary source or a photograph of a primary source inside of it, but the actual textbook itself, that's a secondary source. These secondary sources have primary sources in them, but the source itself was made after it happened. Number 13. What tribe lived in the region marked with the number 5 on the map? Hopefully you said the Lakota Sioux. The region you need to remember for this tribe is the Great Plains. Number 14. What is the term that means within or inside, relating to the inside or inner? The term is interior. You can see the interior of an igloo, the interior of a teepee, the interior of a longhouse, and the interior of a adobe Pueblo home. Number 15. An early Native American settlement discovered here in Virginia was called, or is called, Cactus Hill. That's right. Cactus Hill is located in Virginia, and it is an early Native American settlement discovered here in Virginia. You can see several of those ancient settlements all over North and South America, perhaps having come through the theories we talked about, the land bridge theory or the um, maritime route. Number 16, the early Native American settlement in Virginia, Cactus Hill, is near the city of what? Richmond. Cactus Hill is near Richmond. Number 17, what is the vocabulary term that means of a person, animal, or group to live in or occupy a place or environment? Inhabit. You can see there that the Lakota Sioux tribe inhabits the valley at sunset. The Iroquois Indians inhabited the northeast region of North America. And you can see that with number one. Number 18. Blank tribe grew wild cotton and wove it into their clothing. You say the Pueblo? You would be correct. The Pueblo did a lot of weaving, and they used wild cotton to weave many colors into the patterns that they wove. They would use dyes in order to create a certain color, and they used very brilliant colors in their weaving. Number 19, what are materials that are found in nature, such as minerals, forests, water, and form formable land called? Natural resources. You can see the buffalo was a natural resource for the Lakota Sioux Indians. You can also see the bark that's creating the Iroquois longhouse is a natural resource found from the bark of trees. But notice the next longhouse. It's a little bit different. It's made out of mats that were woven together from river reeds because this tribe did not live necessarily in a forest. They lived along a river, river bank, and the natural resources they had were river reeds. A deer is another common natural resource that many of the eastern woodland Indians, including the Iroquois, used for all types of resources. And finally, the clay in the Pueblo dwelling is definitely a natural resource that the, that the Pueblo had to use. Number 20, what did the Inuit Indians use for lighting? Whale oil. Here are some Inuit Indians actually harvesting the oil from the large whale that they have speared. And you can see that this oil would actually produce a type of fuel in order to light the igloo houses. Hopefully this interactive video enabled you to think and study for your upcoming quiz and test. Goodbye.